Hi guys, Big Mundy here, and today I want to do a video for you to how to counter axe. A lot of new players really struggle with axe. Even decent players quite often struggle with axe. So I just want to highlight a lot of the ways we can we can deal with an axe. Now, if you're lucky enough to be able to counter him in the pick phase, a lot of the things that counter axe are heroes that can do damage with their right click that's not natural right click damage. Uh, or heroes who can slow. One of the things that Axe relies on is to be able to position off. himself correctly uh, between you and your creeps or to catch up and get within melee range of you. So anything that can slow him is usually your really good at him. So Venomancer's reasonably good because when he right clicks he applies a poison which deals an amount of damage. Uh, so I can also I can poison him and just back off and he carries on taking damage. It all, it's also a slow so it gives me a positioning advantage against him. Uh, Viper has the same thing. I can drop the orb attack on him and that slows him. Silencer has the Glaives of Wisdom which deals pure damage. So it's going to completely ignore the... Well, a, a portion of his damage is going to ignore the Stout Shield. So if I take a look at Axe, he's got... In fact, let's refresh him. And if I do one right click on him yes. with the Glaives of Wisdom, he's he took about 60 damage. He's got quite a lot of regen, but he takes about 60 damage just from one Glaive of Wisdom. So Axe is going to reduce a lot of the right-click portion of that damage, but the 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 int damage portion from the Glaives he won't reduce. Drow Range is also a reasonable one because she's got a really good movement slow. It doesn't grant her extra damage, but she can at least prevent him running away, which allows things like your Silencer to... To combo well. well. Now, obviously, any re any hero who has an attack range of uh, uh, that exceeds the range of the counter helix is is usually good against an axe. So all of these guys, that's fine. Um, but with a lot of heroes, like for example, a crystal maiden, if if I if if I just right click him, if I assume I could could just right click him f freely. I mean, this guy has no items. He's got no regen. Even if he just sits there and, and takes the hit, it's going to take me a long time to kill him. If I've got, uh, say, a Wraith King Core or a Dragon Knight or a Juggernaut that are melee, what the Axe is going to do is position himself uh, near my carry. Forward. And then I can't right-click him anymore. Or he's going to position himself near my near my creeps. And all I'm doing is I'm, um, I'm activating his counter helix and letting him farm creeps. So... Someone like a Crystal Maiden relying on a right click, that, that just doesn't work. One of the ways you can deal with it is if you rush a spell like Crystal Nova that's got a really short cooldown, get a couple of clarities and then just spam the hell out of him. Um, it will, you will need to do a couple of clarities and you've kind of got to commit to killing him with it because if you don't, you waste a load of gold on clarities and you get nothing. You end up just having wasted a lot of your gold. So, if you're lucky enough to counter him in the pick phase, there's a few ways you can counter him. So, as we move on from the laning phase, and if you're, you're not lucky enough to be able to counter Axe in the pick screen, um, basically how to counter him comes down to understanding how why Axe is such an asshole. Um, it comes down to Berserker's Call. That gives him 40 bonus armor. He generally buys armor items that give him quite decent armor anyway. Uh, and he's usually got quite a lot of health. So if I pop the Berserker's Call, he's now got 44 armor, which give, even without any additional armor items. It is not yet time. Gives him 72% physical damage resistance. So. You're kind of screwed when it comes to damaging Axe. He can do, he can stand under your tower. He can tank an entire creep wave. He can tank all the damage coming from your tower. Because he's only going to take a small fraction of that damage. So, very early on in lane, what you can do is you get your carry. Um, you get your carry to pick up a Blightstone. Or if they can't get it, get it on the support. It doesn't matter who gets it. Somebody gets a Blightstone. You apply two, two, two minus armor to the axe. Let's now it it. Uh, it sounds like it's 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 not it's not going to do that much. Uh, to be honest, um, a big part of it is is the extra harass because I'm going I'm you're able to do a significant amount of right click when he doesn't put the berserker's call on, wow. 
uh, even from somebody with a, a, a shit right click like a crystal maiden but what you're going to find is the axe is going to run under tower he's going to he, He's going to use his Berserker's Call, and he's going to assume he's kind of invulnerable. Now, it's, it's, it's only a very small amount of additional damage, but it's sometimes enough to uh, push an axe into doing something stupid. He expects to survive a couple of extra hits, and he doesn't. So then what you do, you get a Medallion of Courage. Now, a Medallion of Courage uh, builds from the Blightstone dead easy, and your objective here is to have a Blightstone and a Medallion of Courage on the same team. Uh, it's a really cheap and easy item to get on supports. The small amount of armor it gives you makes you survivable. And the flexibility means if I want to, I could cast it on an ally to make them survivable from, say, a Phantom Assassin. Uh, but it gives minus seven armor on an axe. So without here, Now, it's quite conceivable I could get this early on in the laning phase, even as a, as a Crystal Maiden. So the minus seven armor means I can just ping away at the axe and now I'm doing quite a decent amount of damage to him. I'm doing nearly a hundred damage to him. And that's between the blight stone and the medallion. So if I had the drow ranger hitting him, she's got quite a good right click. She's going to do a huge amount of damage to him. And again, this comes to you wait for him to... You, you kind of want to harass him with it occasionally, but what you really want to do is you wait for him to get under your tower, your middle tower fall. and then you medallion him and freeze him under your tower you get yes. whoever else has got the blight stone to right click him as well and all of a sudden this guy who thinks he's invulnerable you drop a lot of his armor off he's take he's got lower physical damage resistance now you could you could be amplifying his damage like this really early on uh by by a small amount like this but one of the really uh, cool things about the Medallion of Courage is it stacks with a Solar Crest. So if I... It does share cooldown. So if I cast a Solar Crest on Axe, I can't then cast my own Medallion. But that's silly. You wouldn't want a Medallion and a Solar Crest on the same hero. But it is quite useful to have both of them on the same team. For, again, if I have a Phantom Assassin on the enemy team and she jumps on my Drow Ranger... I put that on. It gives my Drow Ranger 25% evasion. Effectively. Uh, yeah, it gives him 25% evasion. So there's a good chance that's going to save his life from a Phantom Assassin. Uh, but where it comes to countering acts, if we add all these items up, because uh, we can basically get 12 minus armor from a Solar Crest. We can get 7 Your minus armor from a Medallion, Medallion of Courage. 2 minus armor from a Blightstone. And then seven from a desolator. So is, if I'm adding that, all right, that's twenty-eight. Your bottom tower is under Let me attack. Just add that up again. Uh, Twelve, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight. So that's twenty-eight you minus armor. Assuming you don't have any tower. minus armor abilities on your Why team, which which happening? would be useful. But like I said, this is if you get screwed by a last pick axe and you don't have any heroes that counter him, this is how. So, I'm going to give the axe a, a heart now, just so I can set everybody right-clicking him a lot. Your middle tower is under attack. Oop. Right, give him a couple of hearts. So if I right-click him now, and I right-click him with Crystal Maiden, and then we use two heroes to put both buffs up, both debuffs on him without his berserker's call up he's now taking a 58% extra physical damage which means somebody like a drow ranger or a phantom assassin or a sven hitting him is just going to completely destroy him it's going to absolutely destroy him and if he casts his berserker's call He's now only got 50% physical resistance, which still sounds like quite a lot, but when you bear in mind, his positioning is going to put him right in the middle of the enemy team, it's going to put him right in the middle of the enemy creep wave, and possibly going to put him under your tower. He's going to take a huge amount of damage, and axes rely on this uh, ability to, to jump in, tank everybody's right click, and then just walk out like it's nothing. You do all this to him, he's not going to be able to walk out like it was nothing.
So once you've got yourself some minus armor sorted for, uh, against an axe, Dying the next thing you have to consider is you need to build damage and crit instead of attack speed. Uh, I played a game once where we had an alchemist. He jumped in um, against an axe. He had AC, Mjolnir, Moonshard, buff, and a Moonshard. And he would totally wreck the, the axe when the axe so didn't have his bonus armor. Uh, and he would wreck most of the, the other people on the enemy team in an even fight. Uh, but what happened is the axe jumped in and he got our Drow Ranger and, and he got three other heroes. And then the alchemist turns around and goes, oh, I'll have some of that action and dives in on the axe. And basically the alchemist killed his own team doing that and then ends up 1v5. So just let me demonstrate how how that works now normally there would be a lot more heroes attacking let's say you build attack speed now this guy's got he's got the drought precision aura so he's, he's actually doing more damage than he should he's going to kill this axe faster than he should but he's got the moon shard buff he's got an assault curious he's got a meal near he's got a moon shard so he's going to do a lot of dps but not of a not a lot of damage per attack so, let's start him attacking, and let's see who dies first. So, now if you imagine that was under a creep wave and you had three other heroes hitting the axe as well, and the axe had sensible items like uh, an AC himself instead of the moon shard, your whole team is going to die to that. But if I bring the Crystal Maiden this back me? in, okay. So now we look at the Silencer. Uh, he's level fourteen. He's got. He's he's really well farmed. Um, it's kind of a, he's sort of over farmed here. But this is to demonstrate if we build crit and damage. He's hitting for just under 400 damage uh, with the possibility of the Daedalus crit. Uh, plus we could use... I'm not going to use the Solar Crest and everything else in this. I just want to show crit versus attack speed. Silent. So actually let's... We could also drop the Deso I suppose. So again, we're going to attack him. And the axe dies first. So if we'd, for example, got that, that alchemist in the game we were in, AC's kind of okay because it's got minus armor too. Um, but if he'd have built... Um, maybe... He probably even got away with a basher. If he'd have built damage items instead of speed, uh, everybody would have been alive. Or if he'd have been smart enough to... So you could have built an Abyssal. I mean, he's still got quite a reasonable attack speed as an Alchemist, even without the insane uh, insane attack speed. He could have built literally anything. He could have built a Manta. He could have built Radiance. He could have built uh, a Deso. If he'd have built a Deso, the, the, the Axe would have just died and our whole team would have been alive. So, so yeah, build high damage and crit over attack speed. Forward. Or battle. you will just kill your team. So one way that, of dealing with an axe, another one more way of dealing with an axe is to pick up a silver edge. The the break applies to counter helix, but not on the first hit. It can still proc on the first hit, so bear that in mind. Now this isn't amazingly good because axes tend to get a blade mail and his armor will still keep him alive. So if you have a hero who Silver Edge or Invisibility, the ability to gank, is going to be good on, are you just sitting on the fence, go for a Silver Edge. Because again, if I bring the Crystal Maiden in here and Benamancer goes to town, Axe manages to get his call off, we can break the, the counter helix and our Crystal Maiden will be able to walk away. So that's kind of, it's kind of useful being able to do. Uh, it doesn't really amplify the damage apart from the first hit, but it does prevent Axe being able to 
do a lot of damage to you. So if the axe had caught everyone on their team except the viper here, the viper could have just hit him once uh, and then backed off and stopped hitting time. him until the rest of the team had backed out. So even without any other items, that's really useful. Okay, so another good way you can counter axe is just simply a Yule Scepter. Um, let me just show you how this fight goes from the axe's perspective and then you'll see, then you'll see why. Let's just speed it up a l little bit, get get us to the point we're about to jump in. So we've got an axe. He's relatively full health. He sees these two coming down here. They're rooted. He's, he's waiting for the creep wave. Uh, but he doesn't really need it. He shouldn't need it. Because of this. Now, this axe has a blade mail. So he's just blinked in. The Queen of Pain has... 365 health. The anti-mage has just over 1200. So the anti-mage probably not going to die straight away. But if we get one counter helix and a cut and a blade mail right click here, uh, the uh, the cop's either dead or about to die. Maybe two right clicks. Uh, he doesn't do this particularly well. He does forget the blade mail. But watch how this fight goes. So he's not. He's got a little bit high. He got, he, he got bashed, so he couldn't get his blade mail off instantly. So there we go. There we go with the Yules. That gives these guys time to just back out when he comes down. Even with the techies coming in to help him, he's um, not in a good way. So with the Yules. The Yule's basically cancels any potential counter helixes. It cancels any potential blade mail damage. And it gives these guys a chance to back out and possibly reinitiate. I mean the Queen of Pain was still uh was still really low here. If we watch this from the CM perspective. If we watch this from Crystal Maiden perspective. To me. See, I was see I was playing the Crystal Main in this game. I was a little bit slow on the Yules. I was just out of range look. So Yules that guy and Glimmercate the uh, the Queen of Pain. They can both back out. The anti mage you know, he's got big balls, he's gonna he's gonna stay to, to kill the axe. But you see that attack? The Queen of Pain is still there. She's still hitting him. So, and and that was mostly because of the, that was mostly because of the Yules. She'd have, she'd have died. She'd have died almost certainly without the Yules. She's doing uh, 170, 250, 258 damage. Uh, doesn't have that much armor. So if she'd have right clicked the axe once more with it with his blade mail on, she'd have, she'd have died. She's had a little bit of health, health regen, but she'd have died. So here we got the same deal as before. Um, uh, I'm sitting to the side. I'm expecting an axe to possibly blink in. So I'm sitting just outside of Yule's range. And I'm waiting to Yule's off his blade mail. Again, I'm a little bit slow on this. I should have been moving as soon as he blinked in. But there we go. Cancel pretty much... All his blade mail damage cancels all his chance to counter helix. It gives the squishy guys time to get out. And his extra armor's worn off, so this guy just dies. Okay, so let's have one more. A little out of range again, because uh, they're chasing into us. Initially, I was going to back out, but the, he jumps in and initiates on the disruptor. That gives the disruptor time to get back out. Now, one interesting interaction between this. Let's just back up a little bit more again. Uh, one interaction, interesting interaction between this and the the glimmer cape is that if somebody's taunted by axe and you yules them, uh, you yules the axe. Uh, there's nothing for the, there's no way they can break the glimmer capes invisibility so if you watch my pl 
if I move my mouse, you watch my player perspective. I glimmered the disruptor, then realizing he got taunted, come back in and use the axe. Because the disruptor is invisible now, because he's glimmer caped, so he fades back out. He, only ha he can only st take a couple of steps out, but we also... The axe drops down, his bonus armor's gone, and the anti-mage is free to just fuck him up. And the disruptor walks out alive. Speed this up a little bit. Sadly we went a little bit too deep here, but... I love screwing axes up. Really love screwing them over big time. See, the thing with countering axe this way is axes initiation is it's it, it does three things with a reasonably farmed axe. It disables anyone you you go on for 3.2 seconds. It deals a shitload of damage with counter helix and we, we've all been in a situation where Axe has blinked on us, he's got like six counter helixes and half your team loses half their HP immediately on his initiation and they also take a shitload of damage from the blade mail so the people he initiates on quite, have, quite commonly take in excess of a thousand damage it's not unusual for them to take an excess of a thousand damage so what you're doing this is you're nerfing Axe's initiation to only be a 3 point second uh, stun. It basically makes people stand around the Yules for 3.2 seconds. Which is still a good, but but without any sort of follow-up sort of wombo combo, like, um, like a Black Hole, or a Phoenix Supernova, or uh, a Disruptor, this... Axe just ends up standing in the middle. He's he's kind of expecting to be standing in the middle of an enemy team that are low and are going to need to run away. This is kind of what he's reliant on. I mean, the chances are he'll get a squishy support, he'll get a culling blade, that'll give him the movement speed to get back out or chase further. But by breaking his initiation chain just with just with the Yule Scepter, you, you leave him in this position where he's now standing in the middle of a very healthy enemy team who can just turn around and kill him. So... Have fun killing X, guys. Bye-bye.